Hi guys, this is Harsh Baldava and today we are going to talk about how to build an efficient frontier in Python. So let's get started. So before getting our hands dirty, we need to know about the different kinds of risks. That is systematic risk and unsystematic risk. Systematic risk, also known as beta, affects the stock market as a whole. Whereas unsystematic risk is the inherent risk in each company. Let's say for a labor intensive company, a labor strike can be an unsystematic risk. So systematic risk is not in our control because a systematic risk is our factors like uh, interest rate, inflation. We cannot control them. What is in our control is the unsystematic risk. We can control the unsystematic risk of a stock by investing in as many stocks as possible. But this will not work if we invest in stocks which are directly related to each other. Meaning, if one stock goes up, the other goes up. And if one stock goes down, the other goes down as well. We have to invest in non-correlated stocks to achieve the purpose of diversification. So the efficient portfolio frontier basically gives us the combination, that is the weights of non-correlated stocks. Okay, so it gives us the perfect combination of these weights so that we can get the highest return for a given level of risk. That's why it's known as the efficient portfolio frontier. It helps us it helps us in building an efficient portfolio. So lots of talking now. Let's get started. As you can see, I have imported these libraries numpy, and these are the abbreviations for it. You will have to import these. These are the prerequisites before starting the operation. The stocks we are going to take are JP Morgan, Exxon Mobile, and Microsoft. These are non-correlated stocks. You can take any stock you like. And then we have to extract the data from Yahoo Finance starting from 2020, January 1st. We are going to extract the closing prices. And here we get the data. And uh, we have to calculate the simple returns. The code is quite simple for this. If you need an explanation for this code, please refer to the video in the description. And uh, then let's get started without any delay. So first we have to calculate the number of assets. And that is nothing but... Uh, we have to use the len function which just counts the number of objects in the variable items that is nothing but three and uh, the next step we are going to do uh, is uh, first uh, we have to create an empty list for uh, portfolio returns as well as the portfolio volatility first i'll type the code and then i'll explain you the logic behind it Okay, 
So we have created an empty list for portfolio returns and portfolio volatility for X and range thousand. That basically means we are going to carry thousand different simulations. We are going to apply thousand different weights to our portfolio. So as to find the perfect combination of weights, let's say 50% in Microsoft and 50% uh, in uh, J uh, and 40% in JP Morgan, 10% in Exxon Mobil, and so on. So we are going to apply thousand different weights. Okay. So for that we need to have thousand different randomly generated weights, and that is the code for generating weights. And the weights should be such that the overall sum of the weights should not exceed one. Right. So this just means that that W1 equals to W1 divided by W1 plus W2 plus W3. And uh, it's gonna do that for each weight W1, W2, and W3. This operator stands for division. And then we have we have to calculate the portfolio returns. A dot append simply means that whatever returns we have generated will be added to this empty list. So we have to get a thousand different returns. So we need to add the list, add the returns to the list as we get each randomly gen generated return, and then. We are going to do the same thing for the volatility. Okay, so the code is slightly complicated. Uh, you have to have knowledge uh, of matrices for this. Uh, but you can, if you practice it, you will learn it by heart. So, okay, so this is it. And after this, uh, we have to calculate, uh, we have to convert uh, the returns into an array because an array organizes your data. So we are going to convert the, both the returns and the volatility into an array. So let's, let's call our returns and let's see if it works. Yep. As you can see, it has converted the returns into an array. Okay. So the next thing we are going to do is we have to, now this looks ugly, right? So we have to create a data frame. So let's name the variable as portfolios and pd dot pd stands for pd stands for pandas uh, the library which we have imported above so pd dot data frame and then we have to just assign the names uh, let we'll name it as returns okay so for this purpose you need to create a dictionary This is nothing but portfolio returns. And, uh, and you have volatility. It is nothing but the dictionary helps us in you know assigning uh, names to the variables and uh, just let's just close this with a square bracket. Okay. Okay. So as you can see, the data is neatly organized in uh, rows and columns, and now we have to just build our efficient fund here portfolio. We have to plot it. So we are gonna use the function dot plot. We have to mention what will be on the x axis. We need volatility on the x axis. And we need returns on the y axis. And the kind will be we need a scatter plot. Yep, here you go. As you can see over here, we have uh, got our efficient frontier. Now, what's the use of this you may ask so see over here for the same level of risk uh, 0 0.44 okay so if you experiment with different weights the highest return you can get is above 20 percent over here for the same level of risk right you are getting a return close to zero percent as well so you need to apportion your money into the different stocks in such a way so that you get the highest return for a given level of risk. And that's why efficient portfolio frontier is so useful, right? 
and uh, we did it guys so thank you so much for watching if you like the video please hit the like button subscribe and comment thank you so much